Achieving beautiful skin tones in your imagery can be challenging to say the least. As portrait photographers, we obsess over this detail, and rightfully so, since our primary subject matter is people. I'm here to show you that with a few simple tricks, you can stop stressing. It's ultimately a matter of setting yourself up for success and knowing which tools to reach for when things start to look, well, a bit Willy Wonka-ish. First off, as with most things photography, amazing skin tones start in camera via the light you capture. Lighting specifically is so, so important to skin tone. This detail can make or break you from the start. The key component we're looking for is shape. And what do I mean by shape? Well, it's simply the gradient from dark to light produced by directional light on your subject. A smooth transition of color and light on your model is optimally what you're looking for, but too harsh or too soft and we enter into unwanted territory. It's not to say that you can't use extremely harsh or soft light sources creatively, but for the purposes of this video, we're focusing on the methods that achieve the best possible skin tones. Now, to wrap your brain around how to consistently achieve this type of light, we'll focus on two factors, light intensity and diffusion. Intensity will determine the brightness of your highlights and the depth of your shadows. Simply put, the higher the intensity of your light source, the more contrast and shape you'll achieve. Now here's the thing, too much shape and we start to produce unflattering shadows which are no bueno. That's where diffusion comes in. Diffusion refers to how evenly a light source is dispersed in a space. The higher the diffusion, the more evenly our light source drapes over the subject, resulting in smoother skin tones overall. One last thing to keep in mind is unwanted color bounds. This especially applies to natural light photographers. Your skin tones are a product of your environment, and if that environment is neon green, well, your skin tones will naturally take on some of that tonality from the reflections. And this relates to the intensity of your light source. The stronger it is, the more color will be reflected on your subject. This isn't to say you should avoid every grassy green field you see, but in situations where you can, please do. If you'd like to learn more about lighting, go ahead and click on that link above. Let's go ahead and edit a few images in Lightroom. The very first thing we need to adjust is white balance and exposure. This also isn't an exact science. We're just looking to achieve neutral, natural tonality, making sure we don't add too much warmth. If you're unsure about where to place your slider, take it to the extreme both left and right and try to dial it in based on what your eye sees. You'll get better and faster at this over time. Once those are set, go ahead and apply your preset. You once again want to check your white balance and exposure. This is where you might normally experience some frustration. You've tweaked the white balance multiple times and the skin tones just look off. This is where HSL comes in. With this tool, we have the ability to individually affect the hue, saturation, and luminance of specific color groups. And FYI, skin tones live almost exclusively under orange. This model was looking a bit on the red side, so I went ahead and tweaked that, along with pulling the saturation and pushing luminance for a bit more shape. In general, skin with a higher melanin content tends to be a bit more saturated, so keep that in mind if you're ever struggling with your edit. Let's take a look at the before and after. I just went ahead and repeated the same process for all of these images. Like I've stated before, there's no specific equation to any of this. Your focus should simply be on keeping things natural and true to what that person looked like in real life. And luckily, HSL makes that process a lot simpler. Just keep practicing and I guarantee your confidence will grow. Now, the last thing we're gonna discuss is contrasting shades of skin that don't play well together as far as exposure is concerned. This can be such a pain. It's either you overexpose one subject or you underexpose the other. Fear not, Adobe AI is here to help. By simply selecting my underexposed subject, please note you might need to use object select as the AI can sometimes struggle with detecting subjects, but all we have to do is slightly pull up the exposure to match. Be careful with this again. We're trying to keep things looking natural, but as you can see, we now have a very balanced image. And if you'd like to learn more about Adobe's AI masking features, go ahead and click the link above where I go much further in detail. That's going to do it for today's video. I hope this information was helpful and informative. If it was, hit that like and please consider subscribing. This is Chris signing off and I'll see you in the next one.